Trey Young. First year Trey Young made the playoffs, right? Most people didn't really know who Trey Young was for real. You might have heard of him a little bit, but the casual fan who just tuned in from time to time, your favorite player is LeBron. You don't watch every game LeBron in. You watch a Christmas game, and you wait for playoffs. It's one of them fans, right? But you watch yeah. a playoff game where LeBron's playing a Trey Young. It's a terrible example because it's cross conference, but you get the you get the yeah. point. So it's like, yeah, oh, that other guy's pretty good. What's his name, Ryan? Oh, such and such, you know, he's he's at third. I like him. So now you're really introduced to who this guy is and he can play or not. So you might have never seen this guy before, never heard of him, whatever, but that's where your name really gets made. That's where the real sponsorship and stuff come in because, oh, he's built for this. Like, okay, he gets up for this. And that's where the real, like the Sam Cassells, the clutch players who are not the number one guy, but the last few minutes, the last shot you need, I'm right here. That's where the real clutch comes in because Rex is in clutch and Fox is in clutch, two different things. Because like I said, the intensity goes up. And so I think that the playoffs are the real, you know, divider between the greats and the good. Mm. And the okay. It is definitely. And the okay. Yo, what to do, everybody? Welcome in to another episode of the B Ball Jones podcast featuring my co host, defensive player of the year himself, Nelson Haskins. What's good, bro? What's going on, man? How you been? I'm good, man. I'm good, man. Just trying to survive. And as my shirt says, you know, increase my worth, increase my value so the price can go up, man. Right. There's a. Uh... That's your boy gear, your brother gear. Got I gotta rep the fam, man. Like, not just because he's fan, because I actually like support what he's doing. Like, oh, I like I actually like it. I enjoy it. Like, I'm not just a fan because he's fam. I'm a fan because I'm a fan, you know. So had to rep him one good time, you know, one time for the one time. Yeah. So I got more person going on shirt in here somewhere. It might be dirty, but <laughs> I got it in here somewhere. And that's a good thing. I mean, you're wearing it. So oh yeah. <laughs> But yeah, man. Um, for today's episode, you know, it's around playoff time, and we just want to kind of uh, get into and explain why the regular season and the playoffs are so different. Because a lot of times we'll see a team that, oh man, they're number one seed or number two seed in the East or West. They got the best record. They have this and that, whatever. And for whatever reason, they just they just get smacked by the time playoffs come and it's just like man what happened they supposed to be this team and supposed to be that team but reality is they weren't built for the postseason so like i just want to get some clarification for people for people who might not fully understand the difference between the regular season and the playoffs because there's really two different seasons to be completely real you can't compare what happened in the regular season to the playoffs you can't carry half that stuff over so um I just want you to kind of introduce your theory around why the regular season is so different from the playoffs. Well, first and foremost, I feel like in the playoffs, number one thing in, uh, is going to slow the game down or the game is going to be slowed down, mm-hmm. especially in the NBA. Because as, as you know, like in the NBA, like, like games, high scoring, a lot of a lot of fast paced teams out there and stuff like that, and you know it's just we we getting up and down. A lot of points being scored, a lot of guys in the thirties, forties, fifties any given night. But um, in the playoffs, it's very rare to have those like big point explosions. You know what I'm saying? Like, well, that's why we hype up guys like forty points in the playoffs, oh, 35 in a playoff game, uh, fifty in a playoff game, things like that. That's that's huge. Like, because the, the game be, is being slowed down and you're being keyed in on a lot more. So, like I said, not only are we slowing the game down, but in the playoffs, you're playing the same team for at least four games, at least. So, you're talking about a seven-game series against one team over and over and over. You're playing them every other day or every two days. So, it makes it, makes it harder for you to do what you do a lot of times because – in basketball, we say in basketball, it's hard to beat a team three times. At least in, we say this in college. It's hard to beat a team three times. You beat a team the first time, like, all right, we beat them, got the best on. Beating the second time, especially on the road and at home, that means you're probably better than them. 
because you beat them twice and you beat them at home and in their own gym. Now that third time you play them, you beat a team three times, you're the better team. Like yeah. in college basketball, like that means like if you could beat them three times, that chances are they 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 can't they cannot beat you, even if it's three close games. But um, it's hard to do that because by the third time you play somebody, you pretty much just seen everything they got off. Like you seen all they played, every defensive sit. You see all their players. You know who they're giving the ball to the most and what they can do. So, in college, we 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 always say it's hard to beat a team three times. In the NBA, in the playoffs, you got to beat a team four times. That's even harder. So it's like, man, we coming out every other night. I already know this guy knows my go-to moves. They didn't watch film. They they got a scouting report. They know they know what we're trying to do. Like we really out here just you know we we running our offense and in our sets, but they they know what's going on. Like. Like it's very few back cut wide open layups for the in the play. You know what I'm saying? Like guys know what's happening. So now in the playoffs, it's like you really gotta lock in and and, and perform. You gotta really get a bucket a lot of times because nine times out of ten, you're not just gonna be open off the plays. So that means it's gonna come down to who gonna go, who gonna sit down and guard, who gonna play the best, like play the best defense, who gonna get the most boards, who gonna play harder, who gonna make the free throws. It buckles down to a lot of smaller things at that point. And so that's the main difference in the game. I mean, in the playoffs in the regular season. In the regular season, I'm going to see you. We're going to play, then I'm going to see you for, for some weeks. And we're going to come back around, play again, and I'm going to see you for some weeks. Then, like, depending on what team you play, if we're in the same division, we, we're going to play each other five, six times. But at the same time, it's still weeks in between. Like, we're not playing each other every other day. In the playoffs, I'm seeing you every other day. If you my matchup, you're going to be my matchup on Wednesday. You'll be my matchup on Saturday. You'll be my matchup on Tuesday. Like, it's just – that's just how it's going to go. It really makes you, like, have to buckle down and guard, and it slows the game down because teams know where, what each other wants to go to. They know what what we're looking for. They know who you're giving the ball to. And so, it, it, there's a reason, like, points go down in the playoffs. Like, there's, there's a reason, like uh, – like in the regular season, you might see games be one thirty something to one thirty something. In the playoffs, it's gonna be like both teams are gonna be getting to the hundreds a lot of time, hundreds to maybe close to the one ten, depending on who playing. But points going way down. We got to slow the game down. We really locking in. We we making sure certain guys ain't gonna be the reason we lose and things like that. And it makes you just really have to play. So. That, that's my take on like the difference. It's like we really we key in on everything at this point because it's when to go home. So with, at this point, like we lose a regular season game to you, all right, you know that's not the end of the world. But playoffs, it is the end of the world. Like this is it. That's all I got these four games, these seven games, however many playoff, how many games you get in the series. That that's all it is. So we sit down, we locking in, we keying into what we need to do to win. So that's the difference in my opinion. I got to agree. Like, obviously, the <clears throat> the biggest, most obvious glaring difference is the scheduling. Because like you said, you go from a player team early, early regular season, like October, November, December, whatever. You might not see them again for like another month or two. By then, you don't play good 10, 15, 20 games in between. So the film you might watch on them from that first game might be irrelevant because that might be a whole different different players for so like they might have been got worse because they had an injury <laughs> things might have changed because of they made a trade or whatever so it might be a whole different strategy you have to come against because that's been months in between versus the playoffs you finna see that same team for a week and a half two weeks so it's like like you said that first punch you gave me cool game one whatever happened is cool it's just kind of like it's like if you boxing you know you get a feel out for them you know you just Little jabs, you know, seeing what their reach is, seeing what their strengths are, weaknesses are. But game two is up for real. Okay. Got my counter punch in. I know what game one was. Game two is that counter punch. Game three. All right. This this is real. Especially if it's one one, it's real now. Let's see you got the real upper hand. By the time you get game five, six, seven, that's the real matchup right there, because that's that by that by that point, you either win or lose. More than likely. You in somewhere in that vicinity of win or lose, especially in game six and seven. So the scheduling is the biggest thing that uh, the difference. And that plays a role into what you're talking about before with the intensity, because now I have to lock into another step is because 
Like, if I'm playing Nelson regular season, I know I got a good idea of what they're doing, what they're talking about. Okay, cool. But I remember, I can't remember who said it, but like the, <laughs> I think it was Jason Tatum. Um, he Somebody over there was like, um, the playoffs got really real when like the regular season scout report, you might get a page or two of like what the team does, tendencies, the last 10 games, whatever, just, you know, whatever. Playoffs, you're getting a whole little packet. Like, you like, hey, this player likes to do this A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Team likes to do A, B, C, D. And it's like, whatever matchup you have. So if you're a Draymond Green, you might get anybody from the two to the five or three to the five. If you're Chris Paul, you're getting ones and maybe some twos. Like, but you're getting a lot more detail and in depth of what that player likes to do. So it's going to it's gonna get more intense because that counter has to have a counter to another counter to another counter. Then at the end of the day, you only got so many counters, bro. Like, I know what you're finna do, but that's what a great shine because it's like, you know what I'm finna do. I know you know what I'm finna do, but I still got a bucket on you. That's what makes the greats elevate over the goods and the averages because it's like the intensity of, I know what you're finna do. You know, I know what I'm finna do, and I still get a bucket. That's tough to stop. And so it's like, Regular season, you you got an idea what they want to do. You watch film or whatever, but it's like you know for a fact because you studied film. I done played you three straight games. I know what you're finna do now. What else are you gonna do? So anything you pull out of here has been you either been had to go deep into your bag or you just special, which probably right. is probably true. You know, you just special like that. So that's the that's the biggest thing in my eyes of like the scheduling because the scheduling causes more intensity to it because I know what you're finna do. So now it's really finna be like a, a, a grueling boxing match because I know what you're finna do. It's just about who can outwit each other and pull something out of hat on the fly and freestyle the best. You feel me? So that's in my eyes kind of like the biggest thing of regular season versus <clears throat> playoffs. Man, and then this, this part of the reason you see guys fold in the playoffs. Like, you know, you got certain guys in the league that we kind of then pegged as um, – unreliable in the playoffs or crack under pressure or whatever. Like, for a while, we were saying that about Paul George, you know, Pandemic P, all that. It was like, cracked under pressure in the playoffs. We are saying that about James Harden. Like, James Harden doesn't show up in the playoffs. Uh, people were saying that about Russell Westbrook when you're still in OKC without KD. And he's like, we say they don't show up in the playoffs, but the fact of the matter is, a lot of times they, like, when you're talking about playing somebody four times or – seven games, how many games it goes in the series. You talking about guys like those, like those guys, like somebody that's got the ball in their hand like every play or they, they touching the ball every play. Somebody they look to for a bucket every time down. Like guys like that, they put their best defender on them. They whole game plan surrounds them. And a lot of times, nine times out of ten, they playing them like, all right, somebody else about to beat us. Like That's how they getting played a lot of times. Like, all right. We understand who you are. We know who you are. We know what you do. But somebody else about to win this game for y'all. Somebody else about to give us 25-30. We're going to lose. Like, James Harden was in the Rockets. Was at the Rockets. It was like, hey, Clint Capella go for 20 and 20. Hey. P.J. Tucker bust nine threes in that corner. Hey. What it is. Yeah. But James, hope you out here getting 40. All that for certain. And so – I, like that, a lot of times that's kind of how it goes too. It's like, cause guys like that, man, guys in the league, ain't no. I feel, I really personally feel like you. There's, I ain't gonna say none of the time, but very few instances in the league has somebody ever really cracked under pressure. It's just they didn't show, they didn't perform the way we thought they would. Yeah. But I don't think that's pressure. I think that's more of just good game planning more often than that. Like, um. Uh, but for example, like when Paul George is in the in the bubble, and he had that shot in the corner, hit the side of the backboard, under pressure, in my opinion, because you you too big and you too good to be hitting the side of the backboard in the corner three, wide open. But like James Harden having eighteen points, shooting five for twenty one or whatever he shot, you know, in the playoffs. I'm just making these numbers up, but you know, and that, and when he was still in the Rockets, you know, they was on his case about like James Harden doesn't show up in the playoffs. So, like, but when James go, like, five for, like, 21 and had, like, 18 points, they're cracking under pressure. Like, I think they, they game plan for him well. 
And I think, you know, in, in the playoffs, the referees ain't giving them as many calls. So that's part, that's like part of his game is that he draws foul. That's part of his, that's part of his scoring. And referees ain't calling foul like that in the playoff time. And so that kind of minimizes his game. Other people know that. So they out here like yeah. being physical with my boy. Like, hey, I save you today. Yeah. About to get out of the mud. Yeah. So uh, I tell you, I, I tell you this quick story. I remember my senior year of high school made the playoffs for the very first time ever. Made the playoffs. Like since I've been in high school, I never had a playoff game. We never made the playoffs. And like this has been the first time we had made the, my school had made the playoffs ball in like some years. Like not like since before I got to high school, it was the first time we made the playoffs in years. But uh, my senior year, we finally break through that wall. We go to the playoffs, play against Silicaga. They were tough. Like they're a good team. They was ranked at the time. They like that. We knew how good they was. But we watch a film on them and stuff. We get in the game plan. We feeling like we can beat them, right? So I'm like, bit like I'm locked in, like more locked in I ever been as a high school player. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm like, man, like because I'm thinking as a young player, I'm like, man, this is, we ain't never been here. We ain't never been, no one. We ain't never seen this school. It's like three hours away, three four hours away. We look, we ain't never seen this school. We ain't never played this team, but just the playoffs, man, it's winter go home. So that's how I'm thinking about it. Like I got to show up. If I don't show up, it's over with. That's how I'm thinking. So I remember play down. Okay. We playing. Um, we had this play that we put in in playoff time because you kind of save some of your plays for that moment because you know guys watching film and stuff like that. So we we put in this new play with me and my guard Shakar run pick and roll, and he come off and, and you know he try to work out. Or if he don't have nothing, I post up. He, he hit me on the block and I, for the post up, whatever. So I remember we run the play. Uh, they switch. So in the switch, I'm supposed to automatically go to the block post up because I got a mismatch. So they, they he hit me the guard like six two in the post. I bump Buddy twice. I ain't really getting nowhere on position. I kick it back out. So Buddy like, yeah, I'm here. Well, I'm not going nowhere. Like he talking, you know, he talking to stuff. So when I kicked it out, Shakar about to run the play, right? He's about, he's about to run a different play. I was like, no, 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 throw me the ball back. Throw me, like, I'm demanding the ball. Probably the first time in my entire high school career I've been demanding the ball. I was like, no, throw it back, throw it back. He throw me the ball back, I catch it. Uh, uh, mean elbow, not going to lie, mean elbow. The kid with the little chicken wing, move butt out the way, spun off, dunk that thing, Brian. I ain't never did this before. Like, no, like, bro, no joke, I ain't never did that before. I ain't never just drop step nobody and dunk. Like, it was crazy. But that's that's how I was coming. I was like, I caught that ball, I said, bah, bah. Yeah. hey. So we going crazy at this point because that was the first play of the game. So now I was like, oh, Nelson finna go crazy. That's how we look at it. Like, oh, my God. Like, we we here. We woke. Yeah. So we, we go down court and we get a stop. Go back the other way. Way. Um, we kind of like we we got the momentum out that first play, so we make a we make a good little run. I think we start out the game we up like ten to two, or whatever. I'm out. We hype. And any like seasoned basketball players know you know get basketball is a game of run. So eventually they made a run of their own, and then we and they gym they crowd going crazy. They talking to us crazy, things of that nature. It's packed out. And uh, we end up losing the game in the end. So, bounced down the first round of the playoffs. But uh, on the bright side, I guess, and on the bright side, Silicaga ended up winning the state championship that year. So, we end up losing to the state champions in the first round. So, it makes you feel better, but at the same time, it don't. I say that to say, playoff time is different. <laughs> like, but good players, I feel like you have to step up, like, like, yeah, pressure was on. I felt the pressure. Like, hey, now, Jim, win or go home situation. We on the road. I'm like, man, it's it. Like, my team depend on me. Like, ain't much we can do or say. It's like, either we're going to go, we got to go out there and get it done. And so, as the young player that I was, in my mind, like, I ain't know it. I ain't never been a scorer or nothing like that, obviously. Like, I've never been a guy like that's going to go get you 20, 25 a night, nothing like that. 
But this is one particular day I was like, hey, I'm not going for it. Like, throw me the ball. I'm going to put a butt in the rim. That's how I was feeling. And that's how I attacked the whole the whole day. It was just one of them things, man. I feel like if you don't show up in that playoff time, you can't call yourself a star. You can't start, uh, You can't call yourself a, a franchise player. I feel like being a franchise player, not only like you got to show up in those in, in the important time, like when we actually need it. And so, yeah, the game planning for you and things like that. But say if you never show up, like, if you go multiple years without producing in playoff time, then um, you uh, like you you're not the guy we thought you was, or you or the guy you need to be. That's how I feel about it personally. So I don't know how you feel. I don't know if you think like like I said, it is good game plan and things like that. But at the end of the day, like you you you, who, you if you are who you say you are, let me say that if you are who you say you are, you got to make a way. You got to find a way to get that bucket or find a way to you know get the team over the hump. So and that's why we say playoff experience is so important. Like you have to have been in that before to to produce. You ain't seeing no young players go crazy in the playoffs like that. Not often, at least, I'm saying. Yeah. The guys that's vets, they running it. Yeah, I 100% agree. I 100% agree. I 100% agree. I can't talk. But the playoffs are where the real stars shine. Like, that's where you really can separate the good – like the really good players. I ain't talking about like, oh, he, he a good player. No, I'm talking about the really good ones. Like, oh, he could be. No, he is. Once he gets to the playoffs, he is that. Like, the playoffs is the is the true testing grounds of who is built for it and who's not. Like you said, one playoff series, it might have been spooked. It might have been a little shook. You know, it's just whatever. It's Ricky Nurse mm-hmm. of you know, playoff Ricky Nurse, whatever it is. I, I can kind of understand that, whatever. But once you get two, three, four times anything and you're not producing, hey, you ain't the man you thought you were. You feel me? So, like, the playoff time is where you really make your name. Because think about it. A lot of casual fans don't watch regular season basketball. It's 82 games of one team, hundreds of games for across the league, whatever. So everybody finna tune in like that, the dedication of it. Nine times out of ten, you're not, you not finna know who uh, Trey on. First year Trey Young made the playoffs, right? Most people didn't really know who Trey Young was for real. You might have heard of him a little bit, but the casual fan who just tuned in from time to time, your favorite player is LeBron. You don't watch every game LeBron in. You watch a Christmas game and you wait for playoffs. One of them fans, right? But you watch yeah. a playoff game where LeBron's playing a Trey Young. It's a terrible example because it's cross conference, but you get the you get the yeah. point. So it's like, yeah, oh, that other guy's pretty good. What's his name, Brian? Oh, the such and such, you know, he did that third. I like him. So now you're really introduced to who this guy is and he can play or not. So you might have never seen this guy before, never heard him, whatever, but that's where your name really gets made. That's where the real sponsorships and stuff come in because, oh, he's built for this. Like, okay, he gets up for this. And that's where the real, like the Sam Cassells, the clutch players who, I'm not the number one guy, but the last few minutes, the last shot you need, I'm right here. That's where the real clutch comes in because, Rex is in clutch and post season clutch, two different things. Cause like you said, the intensity goes up. And so I think that the playoffs are the real, you know, divider between the greats and the goods mm. and the okay. It is definitely. And the okay. It, you you're okay team. You're okay player. Like you you're not a bad, obviously not bad because you're in the NBA. Obviously not bad because you're in a playoff game. Like that's obvious. You know, you're not it can't be bad. That's that's it's, it's 16 teams in the playoffs, bro. You you can't be bad to be one of them 16. You feel me? You might, if you're in the 14, there's a good chance you're bad. But being at 16, that's one of the best teams. You feel me? So it's hard for you to be bad and be in the playoffs. So now, okay, you separate yourself, okay? You made it to the playoffs, congratulations. Now, how far can you go? How do you survive? How do you play? That's the real separators. That's why LeBron's one of the greats, because he's made it to the playoffs multiple times. He hasn't missed the playoffs except, what, two years maybe? Out of his whole yeah. career, his rookie year and then last year, oh, uh, year for last when he was hurt. All right, what does that tell you about the man? Okay, great. Now, finals appearances. Oh, my goodness, this man made it to the finals almost every year, the past whatever years. That's crazy. 
Granted, he's only won four of them, but who cares? Like, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to, you know, gold medal stuff, but think about it, bro. He's been to the finals back to back to back to back to back to back. Missed a year, two years, still there the next couple of years. Like, that's crazy, bro. Like, he might not have won, but his longevity in the finals, not just in the playoffs, in the finals is a lot. That separated him from yeah. a lot of people, in my eyes at least. You know, so the playoffs are the real true testing ground between the greats, the goods, and the okays and the bads. So like that's where you really get tested because now the intensity goes up, the schedule changes, it causes more intensity. And like you said before, that feeling like, oh, I'm in the playoffs, like let's go. Like you excited, you amped. The nerves and everything that come with it. It's just like, oh, I gotta show up, I gotta prove myself. And if you don't have that, bro, man, I'd be built for the playoffs because you're not built for this testing ground in. You know, it's like right. that's what a real hooper show. If you're not, if you're not ready for showtime, when them, that's the real lights come on. Not just any regular season game, no, this is the real lights. So if you're not ready for that, uh, ah, let's, let's find somebody to take your seat, bro. So that's that's yeah. one of the other keys that separate the regular season from the playoffs. Like, because that is a separator, like that's the difference in it, because that's the separator. Because the intensity goes up, the schedule goes up. We're targeting Trey Young, we're targeting LeBron, we're targeting Steph. Can you perform now? That's how you know. Yeah. That's how you know. Oh, we know. We know yeah. Nelson. We know the point guard. We target him until we good. Dang, they still drop 20. Welcome, sir. You know, we, you for real. Like <laughs> You've arrived. <laughs> <laughs> that's how it's you know, man. And that, like you said, that's, that's the separator. And that's why we use playoffs time and finals time as who's the best and who, who who's, you know, just good or who's, who's great and who's not. Like, there's a reason we call Mike the GOAT. Yep. Six times he went to the finals, he won all six times. When it counted the most. And uh, that's why he, and most and most people have, or you know, a good amount of people have, whatever. I don't want no debates going on about LeBron and Jordan and not coming. Y'all say that uh-huh. for Skip and Shannon and them. But, but that's why uh, many people look at Mike as the GOAT. When it counted the most, he, he was there. He, he arrived, he proved himself every single time. See, see, finals appearance is six rings. That's why a lot of people say LeBron is the best. Final ten times, won four, and took took teams that were might necessarily not have been like finals teams. Might not have really been good enough to actually make the finals, but he put the backpack on. Like, all right, let's do it. Y'all get in. It took it took him there. So when it counted the most, he was there. That's why a lot of people say Kobe's the best because Kobe showed up every night. Playoff time, he doing everything he can, even if his team ain't good enough. Doing everything he can to get somewhere, make it. Win, and he all about winning. That's why a lot of people say he the best. And that's just how it goes. It's like, like you say, this is the this playoff time is the separator, and many people have been separated. So many people have, and many people. When I I did, I went up when I said separated, but a lot of people have also been separated. Yep. <laughs> like ah man, you, you, this guy good. This guy going crazy right now. Playoff time, bounce out first round, got sweat. Ah man, I, he, he 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 had a good season though. Yep. <laughs> you yep. know what I'm saying? Like, hey, that's why you say you need that experience. Cause like guys getting the playoffs for the first time, like John Moran and them for the Grizzlies last year. They beat Steph Curry and the Warriors in that playing game. You know, uh, I don't like to get into that because Draymond sold, but you know, they they beat they beat the Warriors. So we like, oh, he beat John Morant. We we thinking about it like, oh, John Morant stepped head up. That's kind of how we looking at it. We look, oh, John Moran still head up, Warriors versus Grizzlies. Like, we ready for it. They end up pulling it out. They go to the playoffs. They, uh, they playing the first seed out the gate. So they kind of, uh, let's see, actually, they playing the second seed because the Suns played the Lakers. So, yeah, they they they, they make the seventh seed. Yeah. And so, uh, I forget who they end up playing in the playoffs. They were the, they played the second seed. Who was the second seed? In the West. Uh, I can't remember right now, but it's okay. But anyway, I think they lost in five. They lost in five games. And so, that let you know, it's like, ah, oh, man, Ja had a great season. This is where Ja getting the hype, you know, his sophomore year. They making the playoffs. He leading them. You know, all, it's, all, it's all good. It's all hype right now. But then it gets to this playoff time. It's like, all right. Now's the time, like you really got to show us. Like, no longer, no longer is it about just like 
who the best player is or what you done did, what kind of highlights you'd have, what kind of season you'd have. None of that matters at this point. These next four games, all that matters. How do you handle it? They end up getting beating the gentleman sweet now. It's like, oh man, y'all had a good year. He's still young, you know. We look forward to how he, how he produces, you know, how he grows. That that's what we're saying now. We ain't saying, oh, John here, John, John going crazy. Now it's like, oh man, he he good, but he young. Yeah, yeah. He's been separated. Yep. So we said that by a lot of guys. Trey Young really showed up last season in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. He had a fifty piece, I want to say. Took them to the Eastern Conference Finals. Had good had a good series. Uh, Milwaukee. Great, like he showed up, and that was his arrival for a lot of people. Like, yeah, they didn't make it to the finals, but they lost to the team that eventually won a championship, and they played him in a hard fought series, and he showed up every game. So now it's like, hey, Trey, Trey liked that. Now we talking about Trey Young might be top five point guard, separated, and he good separated, not <laughs> not bad separated. So, and like LeBron, LeBron guys like LeBron, Kobe. Mike, they get separated at a young age, like, like not so much Kobe because young Kobe still wasn't starting yet and stuff like that. But when Kobe arrived and him and Shaq was going to the finals back to back to back, he been separated at that point. He averaging 20, 29 in the playoffs, things like that. Separated, this man he liked it. Then Shaq bounced. He, now it's his team. He still taking him to the playoffs every year. He's still showing up. Separated. That's that's kind of how that's kind of how we got to look at it. Like, like you said, we keen in on you. Can you still do it? We know what you do. We know how you come in. We you know how we come in every game. We know what you like to go to. Can you still get a bucket? The greats gonna do it. You know what's crazy about that too? Like, um, Shaq says this a lot, and he says how like, like you said before, the greats you gotta step it up. Like, and Shaq always says this. He's like, regular season, I averaged about twenty eight. You know, twenty seven, twenty eight. Playoffs, I made it sure that I averaged about 32, 36 points. Had about, you know, 12 rebounds, stepped it up to have 14, 15. But think about that, bro. I'm so great that I'm not finna just do what I did to you in the regular season. I'm stepping up to another level. I'm averaging 32. I'm stepping up my game, my points per game, four more points, five more points, six more points. That's how great I am. To do what I did plus some, and I, you know what I know I'm finna do. That's how great you have to be in the playoffs. Regular season, you can get away with a game here and there because we ain't watch film or back to backs, whatever. No, it's no excuses now. You playing me four to seven games in a row. You know what I'm finna do. You know I'm finna hit you with this drop step. You know my patterns. You know my tendencies. You know the play calls. You know all this stuff. But I'm still scoring more points than you than, than what I did before. Like that's how great you have to be. And like to add to that, like you said before, you ain't getting play, you getting playoff calls. You ain't getting regular season calls. Like, right. that's why they say certain regular season games, oh, this playoff basketball right here, because you ain't finna get all them little ticket tack calls and all them little touch fouls and all that stuff. Like, James, some of them James Harden fouls, you ain't getting all them. You know, are they actual fouls? Yes. Playoff time comes, no. Like, the rest can swap, swap them down all day. No, nah, it's the same rules, we do the same thing. No, it's not, bro. No. we. It's obvious that you're not making them same calls. Because game right. number... 35 in the regular season, this is not the same call as you're getting right here in game two in the uh, Western Conference Finals. Two different things. And so that's where um, – I think that's a big thing too, like the playoff calls. Like that's two different worlds of how the ref call the game. The finals is a whole other level of how they call the game. Like Because you got to think about it too. You don't want the refs to decide the game. Excuse me. You don't want to get to a point where it's like um, – it's my boy, so I hate saying this, but like they said, the refs gave D Wade his ring in 06 because he lived at the free throw mm-hmm. line. But at the same time, it's hard for you to get all them fouls, bro. Like that's hard to do. But but Wade was good at drawing fouls. It wasn't even on some like the ref gave it to him. It was on some like dry in and out pump fake. You gotta go for it because you know he a midi king. <laughs> they jumping for it, he going right into their body. Like, exactly. You can't say the refs gave it to him. Like exactly. Of course, some of them is like. Of course, you're gonna have questionable calls, but that's basketball period because that's a human calling the game at the end of the day. It's not a robot. You know, it's not a a black and white thing. Pretty much every foul is a gray area, depending on how I like to call the game, depending on if I let stuff ride. So I let certain stuff ride because I want to play basketball, or I'm calling everything. So I want a clean game. Depending on the refs. So 
one ref might call something one thing a certain way this ref might call things another way he might call it a certain way or she might and so it's like you're gonna have inconsistencies from game to game or series to series because i'm an old school ref i like i like to let y'all play i ain't gonna call that stuff now if you got if you bleeding okay i'll call that but like be bleeding <laughs> that's how some rest off for real but it's like i heard it okay i gotta call it i, I see you a little bit i gotta call it so it's just like you can't depend on that but the refs do call it different from regular season playoffs. That's one big thing. That's probably the second biggest thing that you can say besides the schedule and intensity is like the refs will call the games totally different. And so that's why James Harden would struggle sometimes because he he has to shoulder that load and figure out how to still be dominant. But to his defense, it's like if you look at his numbers, going back to Shaq's, when you look at his numbers, pretty much the same thing that he had regular season. If he was averaging 27, postseason he had 27. But the thing is, Shaq's point, if you had to step it up to the next level, and then two, which I, I think I talked to you about this before, you, you'd have to give us moments. What really separates you is the moments. Okay. If you don't give us a moment to where it's like, oh, he dominated during this stretch, you oh, he dominated and hit that game winner. He dominated the game, dominated runs, or dominated with the game winner. If you don't give us one, more than likely two of these things, you're not separating yourself. So James Harden regular season, James Harden postseason, same thing. You can't you can't get away with that at that level of player. Katie regular season, Katie playoffs. Kobe, Kobe. Jordan, Jordan. Every great, like the great greats, they went from here regular season. They are already here above the competition, but they superseded themselves and went to another level. Jeff, I mean, uh, James Harden didn't do that all the time. If he had 26, Definitely. 27. He gave 26, 27. It was just the only thing was he didn't give us moments where like, oh, James Harden stamped his name on this game. And this was this is what he did. He rocked out. He killed with a step back. He crossed Buddy up. He dunked on him, get the Buddy nose, uh, all that stuff. You didn't get that from James. That's yeah. where the problem comes in. Kyrie, oh, you finna get a clutch bucket. You you are guaranteed to get a couple, ah, 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 ah. somebody ankle on the sideline now. He finna f- finesse and flayed his layup. KD finna rock out, do his thing. We hit with the long, hezzy cross. Boom on somebody's head. Pull up in somebody's face with a three. You get in those moments where it's like, oh, oh. They're going back to back. He's like, oh, Giannis, I'm blocking your shot. I'm, I'm hitting this uh, dunk, spin move, Euro dunk on your face. You're giving the moments for them. What James Harden, what moment did we have? What Paul George moment did we have? Rex season, you can count them up. Cool, but that's cute. Playoff time, what's up now? This is what we we this where you get separated at playoff time, and so they're not able Man. to separate from them old selves and separate from the game plan that's already in place. So that's why they average out to where it's like ah we don't we don't know where to put you right now. So until you can step up your from your regular season to the postseason, you're not there yet. So like that's how right. great you have to be in the postseason because you average twenty seven. So we're looking for you to average thirty now, thirty five. And right. they weren't able to do that. I think Steph Curry is my other debate with that too. He similar numbers, but he never gave us a moment to where it's like him. That's 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 the moment. That's the man we were looking for. He never gave us that. He the one. Regular season. Oh, we. Oh, 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 my God. Steph Curry. Oh, Steph Curry. He ain't break nobody ankle. He ain't had no crazy. What are you? Oh, good shot, good shot. Oh, what are you? I remember when he uh, crossed the Clippers. Steve Curry was like, "Oh, what is he?" He made it. He was like, <laughs> "You got it." <laughs> <laughs> but we didn't have that playoff time. That's, that's but like I said, being keyed in on, it's kind of hard to have them same moment. Like I remember, man, one of James Hart, one of James Harden's biggest moments in my mind. I never forget. I, I hope you can put the put it put the clip in. Like I'll never forget when they was playing the Clippers, and they he hit the, he hit Pat Bev and uh Paul George, Pat Bev or somebody hit him with a mean step back, step back three pulled up. Pat Bev clipped his leg out from under him, and Paul George hit his arm. Still went in whole point play. Got up and pointed at both of them. That's on you, and that's on you. I remember that. Yeah. That's, that was one of the biggest moments for James Harden in my mind. I ain't seen that man do nothing like that play all time. Like, it don't never happen. Like, 
And I'll be waiting on it. I'll be watching them like, dang, dang, when you go, you feel me, get in your bag. Like, it just don't happen like that. And then, like, that's, like you said, that's another thing that separates people, like, them big moments. Like, for Steph, I remember Steph's biggest moment in my mind when he hit the shot at OKC. Where he, he came across half court. They decided not to call the timeout, but it pulled up about four feet past half court. Three ball. Good. Won the game. That's one of his biggest moments to me. Like, frustrated moments for me, that. bro. I hate that moment. Like, I was, oh yeah, because you, you know Russell. I know your Russell's your boy, so but you just don't you don't see that in playoff time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But then you got guys like like uh, KD. KD really had it had a moment last year against the Bucks. He didn't play almost every minute of every game. Hit the game one, a foot still on the line. It wasn't enough. He had back to back games was even crazier. Exactly, like. Folks remember that, like, KD is going crazy and nobody is helping him. Yeah. Dang. <laughs> like, like for real, dang moment in the playoffs. Step back on Paul George. It's like, man, it's undeniable at this point. You yeah. show up at the biggest moment. LeBron with the block. Kyrie with the shot. Ray Allen with the shot. Like, the greats have the moments, man. And that's not to say the guys who, who like, James Harden's still great. You know, he's going to the Hall of Fame. Steph Curry, obviously, going to the Hall of Fame. All that. But it's just man, like those the lack of those moments in a lot of basketball fans' minds keep them from being like angry. A lot of people, like a lot of people, would would have said Braun wasn't a goat until the that that twenty sixteen series, and then he got the block. So a lot of people are like, all right, now now it's undeniable. Like he got that moment. He he did something that ain't nobody else done. A lot of people were like, okay, this is it. He 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 that now. Yeah. Like a lot of people wanted to call it Kyrie top five point guard in the league till he hit that shot in 2016. Now it's like, oh, is Kyrie a better the best point guard in the league? Is he better than Steph Curry? Like, it's just one of them things, man. Like, I don't know, bro. It's just it's crazy how it goes, but like, like, I feel like it's more of a thing, like you have to be, you have to be attached to the game to really get like you can't just be looking at it like like if I put somebody in front of a playoff game that didn't know much about basketball and then watch, let them watch James Harden play, and then at the end of the game, I was like, who do you think the best player is for the Rockets? They'll probably still say James Harden. Like, oh, it must be that guy. I mean, he got the ball all the time. Like, they let him shoot. He must be their best player. If I let them watch LeBron James play and they don't know much, nothing about basketball, they're going to be like, he's clearly the best player on the floor. Like, he had a 30-point triple-double. Obviously, he's the best player. Like it's a difference. If I let him watch Steph Curry play in the playoffs against uh against the Cavs in the 16 series, and I said, "Who you think the best player for the Warriors is?" They'd probably be like, "I don't know. I like that Draymond Green guy. He seems to really bring the energy. Like seems to be the motor of the team." Yeah, you're not wrong. I'm trying to flip it around, but who the best player for the Cavs? Oh, that LeBron guy. Yeah. So he, He's clearly separated himself from everyone else. Yeah. Then at the end of the series, they hit him with the LeBron James first player to lead every statistical category in a playoff series for both teams. It's undeniable. Yeah. The thing, man, you got to have them moments because, like, that's what's going to separate you. Like, that's what's going to let you know who the greats is. Like, even if you don't know nothing about the game, you can look at him and be like, all right, that guy, like, that guy's obviously the best player. But, Moments now it's like he's better than everybody here. Like it's not, yeah. it's not like he 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 he's here. Yeah, he got to play, but he here. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they I think, feel it, but he here. <laughs> yeah, I think what you say is is very key. Like you have to be clearly better. Like it's it's a clear difference. Like is he is he the best player? I think so. I mean, I th- I guess you know I watch basketball a little bit and I can tell he's good. But no, oh wow, Kawhi Leonard, he is obviously the best player on the floor on both teams. Oh, LeBron's the best player on the floor on both teams. Dame Litter's obviously like hands down clear. It might be some head to head when you got a KD and LeBron bumping, a Giannis KD bumping Wesley, who's the best player on the floor. Cool. But team to team, oh, he's clearly the guy. KD's clearly number one. Like and Kyrie's on the floor, and James Harden was on the floor with him doing different uh different stretches. I think game three. Three or four when they switched out when Kyrie went down and James came back, but Katie was number one 
all seven games. There, that was clear that Brooklyn Nets number one guy, Kevin Durant. No if, ands, or buts. Right. The Bucks number one guy, Giannis, Greek freak, hands down. No debates. Now you might have a game here and there where Chris Middleton shines, Drew shines, Brooke Lopez shines. And it might be the one game where it's like, okay, I can take my I can back up. I ain't got to put up 30. Cool. I can only put up 20. Brooke, you go score 25. Drew, you go score 30. Chris, you go score 35. You know, that's your game. But out of seven game series, five of them games should belong to me. Cause I'm the I'm the guy. I, I'm clearly the guy. You all know this. It's my team. But now Kobe and Shaq dynamic where Shaq is clearly the better player at that point. But fourth quarter, last shot, Kobe, do your thing. Hands down. Mm-hmm. That was LeBron and Kyrie. First three quarters, three and a half quarters. LeBron's the man. We all know this. But Kyrie, take us home. You had those situations. But it's clearly, if you flip the roles, that would not work. Well, Lakers, it might work because it's Kobe. But Kyrie, can mm-hmm. Kyrie really carry that team the whole game and get LeBron the ball in the fourth quarter? Debatable. Very debatable. <laughs> Slip on the other end. Kobe could carry that team. Just give it a shot. No. Just because he can't hit free throws and late game is, is different for big men. But um yeah, like the last thing I want to kind of bring up is like the matchups mm-hmm. for what the difference is between regular season and postseason. And when you get to the regular season. Matchups are cool. You know, it's you can exploit different matchups and, you know, we like to play this style, I like to play that style. Our style wins this night because of whatever. But now playoffs is really, it really comes down to matchups, but more than anything, it comes down to may the best man win. Because, yeah, we might have the matchup opportunity to where we can take advantage of it, where you might be a number three seed, we're a number six seed, but... Obviously, the talent isn't that far gone. It's not that you're that much better than us, nine times out of ten, you know, but right. we might have the matchup that takes advantage of you because we have um, we have the bigs and you don't. Like the Warriors, shoot, pretty much most of the season, they were down to big. They didn't have uh, uh, Jameis. They didn't have Looney, and they didn't get another big versus uh, let's go Lakers from last year. They had a plethora of bigs. They had Anthony Davis. I think it was last year. They had Anthony Davis, JaVale McGee, <coughs> Dwight. They had all these bigs. They had too many bigs. The yeah. Blazers a couple of years ago, they had like three or four bigs to spare. Like they had a plethora of bigs. So we would have countered that and just been big against you guys. Matchups matter. But at the end of the day, this matchup is irrelevant. It's about who can go out and get me a bucket. I think that's the ultimate separator between the goods and the greats. You know what I'm going to do? Forget, matter of fact, forget the playbook. Ain't no playbook. Give me the ball and I'll work out. I'll figure it out. And I think that's the ultimate separator between the basketball players who are really good and the hoopers that are great. It's there between the basketball. I, we might talk about this another day, too. There's a difference between a basketball player and a hooper. Get the ball to me and let me rock out. I don't, well, players, what? No, 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 no. Forget that. Mm-mm. Doc, you sit down. Pop, you sit down. I got you. I'll take you home. And he's over there. All right. Let me make the right sub. Make sure you good. You want him in? Cool. We'll substitute that out and boom, rock out. Do your thing. The ultimate separator for real, for real, I think player-wise is can you get me a bucket? Can, can you go off script? Can you freestyle real quick and provide? Whether offense or defense. This wasn't in the playbook. This wasn't in the film session. None of this stuff happened on, on – it wasn't none of this was scripted. But can you perform right now when a train is going off the track and we still got to take – we still got to get home? Can you perform? So regardless of the matchup, regardless of the film sessions, regardless of all the practices, walkthroughs, all the stuff, get everything we talked about for this duration of the podcast, can you perform when things aren't going according to plan and we don't have anything else to go to? Can you perform? That's what it comes down to in the playoffs and the finals. Regular season, you can get away with that because you got you you lose today, you got another game tomorrow. You lose this game, it might be it for you. But can you perform? Facts, bro. That's that's definitely who can get you a bucket. It's like a lot of people say playoff playoff series more like decided by the top ten players in the series. So let's say we we go to top ten players in the series, 
whatever team got more of those 10 players, go in series. So, like, like Milwaukee and Phoenix, say the best player in the series is Giannis. Second best player, let's say Chris Paul. Third best player, let's say Devin Booker. Fourth, Chris Middleton. Fifth, DeAndre A. Then, you know, then the next five, that's important because now we just named all the stars. We knew that. But then the next five people, who is it? You might go, you might go Bobby Portis. You might go uh, Brooke Lopez. Then you might go for the Suns. You might go um, Jay Crowder. Then you might go, uh, oh, my fault. I love Drew Holiday. I'm tripping. I'm tripping. I'm tripping. So you, you say like Giannis, Chris Paul, Devin Booker. Holiday, DeAndre, Bobby Portis, Brooke Lopez. Them, la- them last two is debatable. Jay Crowder, um, Dante DiVincenzo, you know, but yeah. they give the, the books six of the top ten. Yeah. So it's very important. Like, who can get you a bucket? What team going, you know, going to be able to, to keep, to hold it together when things ain't going right? Who who gonna who gonna you feel who gonna control the team the tempo better things like that, but my last thing on I uh, my my last little story you know I I try to throw a story in there for my from you know, my few playing days you know I'm still I'm still playing so I'm still collecting stories so hopefully I never run out. My, I remember my sophomore year at JUCO we made the playoffs, we in the tournament right the tournament is being played at Shelton State Community College in Tuscaloosa. We playing against Chattahoochee Valley Community College. First round, Chad Valley team. We ain't played them. We never played them before, but uh, they're a good team. Obviously, in the playoff. So, the thing about Chad Valley was, I ain't, I ain't gonna try to say too much because I know the coach at Chad Valley. We good friends. He, that Chad Valley is not far from Columbia. I should say. So, I've been to a couple Chad Valley games. They come to a lot of our games. All that. So, y'all cool. Y'all good friends. But anyway, Chad Valley first round. And uh, <clears throat> I realized quickly, I might add, I am being keyed in on. Think about my team back then. That's my sophomore year. We had a scorer named Trill. Uh, the Trill tape, Collins Trill. Trill averaged 24 a game. Then there's me, who averaged 14. And then everybody else. <laughs> it's like guys that did their job. My point guard, Vaughn, very solid point guard, played great defense, controlled the ball, controlled the tempo, didn't turn it over, things like that. He wasn't going to give you many buckets. My shooting guard, Walt, who was just another point guard, really, like, handled the ball, wasn't going to turn it over, made few, very few bad decisions, wasn't going to get you many buckets. Just, just saying, like, wasn't much of a shooter. He could shoot when he wide open, but wasn't a knockdown shooter. He was small. You know, we just, he wouldn't give you a bucket, but he made good decisions with the ball. And then my my other big Tez, Martez, another dependable big, play hard, gonna get you some rebound, gonna get you some hustle points, things like that. And so, but that was our team. And then you know we had some decent guys come off the bench. So I realized quickly, me and Trail being keyed in on. So, because we lead our team in points and rebounds. I'm averaging a double double, he leading the league in points. We both all conference players. I should have known that would happen. I'm not even thinking about it. Like, this show you, like, my first year, we didn't make the playoffs. But my, but show you, like, I didn't have a whole lot of playoff experience. I'm like, what's happening? So I realized when I called the ball, first time I called the ball in the post, the big guard of me, the guy named Max, great, great player, good player. He forcing me to turn over my, my right shoulder to use my left hand. He forced me to use. So when I, I'm still trying to go middle, use my right hand, whatever. He's sitting on that. And so, like, now I'm kind of locked up. So then, so then, uh, like that, I caught the ball in the post. I'm trying to go the other way, the guard digging, digging off our guards because they can't shoot like that. Now I'm kicking out to them. Shooting the ball, like, they're they not shooters like that. They're not shooting it. So, I'm like, man, we stuck. And they really got me locked up. I'm not shooting it good. Like, I, I had, like, two turnovers in the first half and, like, two points. I'm in, I'm at halftime. I'm like, I'm really, like, blow because I'm like, what's happening? Like, I don't know. I know a video before. I'm like, man, like, why? I'm not scoring. They're like, what's happening? They t- but the guys on the sideline, tell the guys that have been on the sideline watching the game, they're telling me, they're like, hey, this, this is what's happening. You need to make this move. You need to go strong. 
and you need to finish like you need to finish them. They're small. They're smaller than you. I know you feel it. I'm like, bro, but when I turn, I feel like I ain't got space. He was like, I know. I see that. I was telling me the same thing. Like, I see. I, I know what you see, but you need to jump high. You need to jump high, and you need to finish strong because you're bigger than them. Don't be scared. Like, that's what they want you to do. They want you to feel like you ain't got space, and they want you to kick it out. All right, cool. So come out to halftime. We down at this point because they they – the game plan is working. Just being real, game plan working. Next time I touched the ball, I did exactly what they told me to do. I made my move. I jumped high, tried to finish strong, tried to dunk on Buddy. But when it happened, that's when it clicked for me. I was like, I, I could just jump high. <laughs> I could just, <laughs> as long as I'm, as long as I get to this spot, to my spots, and then jump higher than them because I was taller than him. Like, finish. I can finish over these guys. But I'm feeling like because they doubling me and whatnot, and they digging off. I'm supposed to kick it. They're like, no, nah, don't kick it. You can finish. You can do it. Like, you good. So that's what I'm doing now. At this point now, I'm feeling a little, I'm feeling a little bit better about it. So, like, now, like, now when I touch the ball, I'm going to the right places. So I score, like, eight points and a half. I only finished with 10. I ain't going to make it seem like I had, like, 20. You know what I'm saying? I only finished with 10, but I had eight in the second half, and it was time to bucket. So, and then uh, I'm still playing great defense, blocking shots, getting rebounds, all that. And the next thing I know, once I got a couple buckets, you know, they run play, they used to run plays for me at Bevel. So once I got a couple buckets, now it's like I make the move, this shit off the tear. Making the layup. They keying in on me so much, tears open. Long story short, we win the game, win our very first playoff game in pro in program history in like the last long time. I don't know. I don't lie. First play I went for me and for our team, for everybody on our team. First play I went for my coach as a coach at Bevel State. All that. Big game, big game. And my coach tells me, like, hey, you you made the adjustments. You did the right thing. You, you, you got it. Like you you made it happen. And you know, I ain't trying to make it seem like I say that, because like I say, I only had 10 points, but I, I did what I was supposed to do. I did, I gave us what we needed at the time. That's playoff basketball. Good player. They can in on you. It's like, hey, you ain't got no choice. You're a good player. And I had to realize that, like, I, I'm a good player. I'm not – I wasn't thinking about it before before it happened. But I'm, I have to say, I realized, like, I'm I'm a good player. Like, other teams are keying in on me. They know that. So, they looking at it like, we're not going to let Trail beat us. They're not gonna let, we're not going to let Nelson beat us. Somebody else go out to school. And I had to find a way around there. I had to make the adjustments. And – you know, my coach's staff, that child, you know, that credit goes to my coach's staff and my other teammates for giving me, you know, the advice and, like, giving me, you know, keeping me up, making sure I wasn't down about what was going on because I, I, I was being locked up. Like, I was being locked up. I just was struggling with it. But you know, they, they helped me make the necessary adjustments. Our coach staff made the necessary adjustments as a team, and we pulled out the game. And that's what it comes down to, man. Like, can you make the necessary adjustments? Can you get past being keyed in, though? Can you get past people using your weaknesses against you? All that stuff. Yeah. That, that's the difference between playoff. But, like, that was that will separate you between being a great player and a good player. And so uh, that's my that's really my last thing on it. Like, like for a young player out there, like, who has never been in that situation, who hasn't been to the playoffs and things like that yet, if you for you to be who you want to be, you know, I'm assuming everybody you know that's playing right now listening. You want to be great. You want to be good. Like you want to be one of those players. To be one of those players, that's part of it. Like, great power comes great responsibility. Like be keyed in on. Like people going, people gonna get the scout on you. Like all right, this is what he does. This is what he like to do. We gonna make sure he can't do that. Are you gonna be able to make that necessary adjustment? Are you gonna be able to still get to where you need to be? perform, produce the number that your team needs you to do, all that. So that's my last little two cents on it. I hope y'all got something out of that. You got anything else you want to say to the people? You made me think about it, man. Like <clears throat> another key to great teams winning is that, that X factor. Like you said before, it was the top 10 players, right? And once you get past the stars, the superstars, the all-stars, you know, the guys that we all know we're looking to perform. You're going to have a game four, game four or five usually when that time comes where you need to have, if you're looking at, uh, let's go to another team. Let's look at the the Heat, right? You got Jimmy, you got Bam, 
You got Kyle Lowry. Who is the next guy going to step up? Not Hero, not, not Duncan, but who's the next guy? Besides the average guys we all know and love, who is that random person that's a, a, a role player coming off the bench or whatever is going to step up and give you the timely buckets? They It might not be a 20-point game, but it's a timely 10. You 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 cut that run off with the last two buckets you gave us. You stopped them on defense when we needed it. Or you might explode and had a 20-point game off the bench when somebody was struggling. Jimmy couldn't get out that night. He was just, he just had a tough night. It wasn't his night. Man, where do we think this last couple points from? Oh, what you call off the bench just came off and gave us some buckets. That's what that's what comes into with the playoffs to where scouting report working well for the other team. We locking up Jimmy, we're locking up Kyle, Bam, whatever. Game plan working great. We oh we got them down. We we won. Are oh, we locked up Nelson? We locked up uh, guard. We we winning. Oh snap! Number eight just just went off of twenty points on us. Like what? <laughs> like they really I be don't even know their name. They were we locked up Nelson. We locked up Trill. Like who is number eight? Why number eight getting off right now? <laughs> Four and eight. <laughs> and that's what the great teams once again separate themselves because. You got that's where depth comes in too. The depth, you gotta have a deep team. You can't just be superstar heavy and just be like, oh, we're gonna win because we got the best players. No, nah, some nights KD not gonna have it. He struggled. Giannis ain't gonna have it every night. And think about it, out of the 16 wins you have to have to win the finals, your star's not gonna perform all 16. Your superstars are not gonna perform all 16. They're not gonna perform the all stars are gonna perform all 16. Who can step up and give us a timely 20, a timely 10, a, a timely stop? A timely, a calmness down right here, get get us in our sets, right? Whatever. Who's that X factor that can come in and step up to where you you might not win us the game like with the last bucket, but you get us through this tough stretch right here. And so X factors are probably like the last thing I want to bring up as far as like what really matters in the playoffs versus regular season. Because yeah, it's cool if you do that regular season. Like then it might just be your game. Oh, he, just, oh, he had a good game. He, he just timely, whatever random game this was, he was just feeling that night. But no, no, no. This is the playoff times where you might not be keyed in on, on as much, but we got a clear idea of what you can do. Because I remember I had a homeboy telling me when he went to college, he was like, he he wasn't playing that much, right? And he was just, you know, playing a little bit. But they had a scout report on him. Oh, shooter, as soon as, as, soon as he got in the game, touched the ball, oh, shooter, shooter, watch out for him. He was like, hold on, bro. Like, I don't even play that much. Like, how do you know I'm a shooter? That's how in depth that junk goes at college. I know it. Now imagine that junk being keyed in playoffs in the NBA. We know everything about you. We know, we know a good about it. We know he's a shooter. We know he's a slasher. We know all this, this stuff. So now unless you a Cam Thomas and you just get in your bag and go crazy. I don't know what you can do, bro. You know, so that X factor really comes in clutch in the playoffs, like I said, a Sam Cassell type. I can't think of a current player right now. That's the best reference I can give. But a Sam Cassell type of player that can step up out the blue and just be like, game four, I can give you 20. I can get a game one for you, game six. But best player, take us on. That's how I'd be, you know, in the playoffs. So, uh, like with your story, it would have been perfect if somebody would step in and be like, hey, y'all getting keyed up. I got you. Got to step up, man. You might not go crazy and give us a 30-point game, but if you average an eight and give us 15, that's what we need. Yeah, we needed that. <laughs> you know, like, oh, we need – like you said, you you was about your average. You had 10. You said you averaged about 14. That ain't too bad off from what you do. But we needed something else. We needed something else, like somewhere. Man, I only average eight, but got to be more aggressive. Oh, man, you had a 15-point game. Great game, man. You hit the, this clutch shot and this clutch shot, get clutch stop, all this stuff, but – the X factor comes in, that's what really matters too in the playoffs. So that's my last little nugget, man. I think the overall thing is just like, how can you separate from the norm? Can you separate from the regular season? And can you separate from the average of whatever's going on around you? And how can you, when you get punched in the mouth, how do you respond? That's the biggest thing in the playoffs too. Like, oh, yeah. Got, that's every punch, game. But even heavier in the playoffs, because that's a big punch, bro. Like, Think about all the emotion that goes into a playoff game. Like you literally going from here to here almost every game. Game one, you win. You go, oh man, we finna win. Game two, you get oh we lost. Like we finna lose. We finna go home. Game three, you win. Oh, like you really on a roller coaster, right? Every that. game. As a fan, I feel that jump. We win. Celtics win. Let's go, baby. We finna win. Oh, we lose game two. 
Dang, man, I don't know if we can who finna trade, man. What's, what's, what's postseason looking like? What's the draft looking like? We win, you back on it, yes, sir. Number band number eighteen coming. Every game is a roller coaster ride. So imagine as a player how invested you are. Sometimes it's like, especially when you're young, it's like I don't know. And so, can you weather that storm and stay in the, uh, level enough to where it's like we cool? It's on the game one. It's on the game two. It's on the game three. It's tough to have that long-term approach in a seven-game series, but the GOATs figure out a way. I can't I can't tell you how to do it. They got some kind of way to where they can maneuver their brain to and their emotion to where they, they can wiggle through and separate and still perform. So it really is to come down to separating yourself. That's what it comes down to. Exactly. And, and just because just you said that, like, uh, uh, young Hoovers out there, it's important that you find that balance of never too high, never too low. Like, like you said, game one we win, we up here, we we hype, we we good, man. We finna win it all. Then we lose game two. Like, man, can we pull this off? Man, what we gonna do, man? They they was on us today. Then we win game three. It was like, oh man, we up, man. We we, we take it all. Like, you got like, can't ever get too high, can't ever get too low. You gotta maintain until it's all said and done. When the season over with, you can be low. Hey, you get beat. Season over with, we going on. Then you can be low. We win it all. We go. We win the championship. Whatever. You could be high, but until the, until it's all said and done, I never too low. So y'all remember that too. Let me, let, me, let that be one of my little let that be my little nugget for y'all for the day for this episode. But uh, is that all you had to say, B? Sound good, man. Is it? All right, man, it sound good. But uh, it was a good talk, man. Good, good, good playoff talk. Uh, I hope y'all got some out of it. Like playoffs only come once a year, man. That's what makes it special. You have a regular season game every other day. Playoffs only come once a year, so make sure you're winning your own hoopers and guys still playing. Like, but don't, don't, don't miss your opportunity, man. You only get one shot. Do not miss your chance to blow. So that, that, that I just, you know, I if you want to, if you want to be good, you want to be great. Make sure. I'm not saying go out there and jack up shots. Obviously, like no, you need to know your role, know your job, know what you do for your team. But when it comes to that playoff time, you need to do that time ten. Go hard and play hard and play smart and make sure we minimize the mistakes. Because if you're a good player, they 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 only they they watch you. They know what you like to do. They know what you like to get to. So you need to be willing and able to to finish through people, finish through uh, finish through game plan. Make sure you know where your counters are. And things of that nature, and be able to adjust, and that's how you separate yourself. And once you separate yourself in that time, that you'll be recognized for 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 you know, you'll be more recognized for your playoff time play. And so that'll get you where you want to be. But uh, that does it for us in another episode of the B Ball Jones Podcast. And uh, I hope y'all enjoyed this one. Hope y'all got something out of it. Please like and subscribe, share with your friends. Uh, if you uh, if you listening to it, man, you know somebody had a rough playoff series or whatever. Or, I mean, a play a rough playoff. Maybe they lost. Maybe they won. And you know, they season already over with. Send this to them. Make sure they know for next year. Make sure they getting ready, prepare themselves. Make sure they ain't never too high, never too low. Things of that nature. No. And I uh, hope they get some out of it. And you know, just keep them pushing the lesson forward. But uh, be sure to uh, follow Brian on all social media at B Ball Jones. That's B E Ball Jones on Instagram, Twitter, and uh, Facebook. Be sure to follow me on Twitter at Nelly H thirty four and Nelson Askin on Facebook. And you know, keep the conversation going. Let, and can be sure to leave comments. Let us know what you think. Let us know what you think is important to do in playoff time. What What do you think separates playoffs from from regular season? What do you think separates players? from being great and being good. Do you think it's more than just the playoffs? What, what, tell us what y'all think and let us know what y'all, how y'all feel about what, some of the things that we said. And uh, I think that's it. So uh, without further ado, we appreciate y'all again for listening and uh, we out.